Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and as the title probably shows, we have started the Procedural Node series. So this is episode one, and we're just gonna go over some getting started stuff. So don't expect a lot of math and a lot of node stuff right off the bat. I'm just gonna show you what procedural even means and you know how you kind of navigate Blender to even start using nodes. So if I can get this over here, uh, you can see that I want to start off with some reference material of just what is possible. So I'm on the Twitter of Simon Toms, Simon Toms. Uh, he's pretty much a legend with this kind of stuff. So let me show you some results that are possible, not necessarily that we can make, but that are definitely possible. So you can see that, first of all, what you have to understand is all of these are just spheres in Blender. And basically everything you're seeing is just a bunch of math he threw at this to get these results. So this is like top of the line stuff. This is just what is possible. And you can see that all of this is animated as well, which we're gonna get into. So that's part of what it means to be procedural that you can animate everything about it. But these results are just crazy. So big uh, shout out to him. He doesn't need a shout out, everybody knows him. Um, so basically I think we're gonna do some of these at least it, like the theory of some of these, we're not gonna make the results this good, but like doing stuff like gas and atmosphere and all that, we're definitely gonna do. And then also this hedge maze, I think we can work our way to the uh, labyrinth as well. So these are just some of the crazy results that are possible, but yeah. So let's, let, let's just talk about what procedural even means. So here we have a normal blender scene with a plane and a truck outside without any material. So this is just a black plane. I mean, it has a material, but nothing's connected to it. And normally what you're probably used to is using textures. So for example, I have this texture of a circle. It's just a JPEG or a PNG. And in this case, I think it is a 1K texture. We can check. So we have a thousand by a thousand texture, PNG, etc. Has an alpha channel, doesn't matter. So this is just a texture that you could probably make yourself or download online. And when we take this, we can plug it in to our surface. And again, you don't have to understand what any of this means. I'm just talking over some very, very general without knowing anything theory. So basically we have a node here, a node here called circle texture, which is containing our texture. We plugged it into here and now you see it on the plane and it's a circle. But the issue is we can't really control anything about it because we just took an image and slapped it on there. Well, not only can we not control it, but when we zoom in far enough, you can see that the circle is actually jagged. Why? Because this picture has a limited resolution. And the more we zoom in, the more apparent that is. So it seems like a limitation of textures is you just get what you get, and that means you're probably gonna have to buy some textures or you're gonna have to make a bunch of them uh, just so you can cover every scenario. And then also the resolution matters and you're taking up space on your hard drive, especially if you go high resolution. On the other hand, on the other hand, we have this node that I made. And if we look into this node, it's actually a bunch of nodes. It turns out that this thing I made is actually a group of nodes, don't worry about it. When I take this and plug it in, it also gives us a circle. It almost looks exactly the same, except you can see when I zoom in, the curvature doesn't look jagged at all. It just keeps going. And that's because this circle is not made with any textures at all. It's all mathematical. So not only does this uh, not have any resolution issues because it has infinite resolution, but you can see that this node also has a slider that I made. What does it do? Well, it just controls the size of the circle and that's like not, not that big of a deal. Like technically you can take a circle uh, texture and scale it. So you can do that kind of operation, but you could add uh, tons of more controls that let you do other stuff with more complicated shapes. So really what we have is a procedural approach and a texture approach. And once we get into more sophisticated stuff, you know, you could just take this node and do a bunch of stuff with it. So let's say we duplicated it, duplicated it. Again, don't worry about any of, of what this means. Now I'm gonna view this one and make it a bit bigger. And we can just combine these using some math. So let's just take this one. Let's take this one, do some subtraction or something. And let's play around with the size of this. And now you can see that with a very simple edit, we have made a torus, which is kind of like a, a 2D donut, if you want to think about it that way. And we can control the outer ring, the inner ring. And again, this is procedural. And you could, again, do this with textures, but now we have a infinite resolution donut. So you can see how this stuff kind of scales really quickly. We went from a circle to a donut, which it, it, it is a bit more complicated. Okay, that's fine. But what, what if we want to do something that's actually more sophisticated. Well, there is room for that too. 
you can see I made a node over here called a Tyler node. And if you look into this, it's not that much. It's some math nodes, some other stuff. Don't worry about what it means. But what we can use this for is, let's put our circle in here. And then we are gonna take this and plug this into this mystery vector socket that I haven't explained. And now you can see we have a bunch of random circles. And now we have many, many more. And this is completely procedural, infinite detail on all these circles that we can zoom into. And the best part is, the best part is we can actually animate this kind of stuff and get different seed values and kind of control where we, where we want the circles, or you can fill everything in, maybe make this a bit smaller so we have less of them. And now you have, if we make this circle a bit bigger, now you have some kind of fancy floor texture. So really you have a ton of control over this stuff. So really when you think procedural, think something that is basically a uh, does not have any textures. That's the best way you want to think about procedural. If it doesn't have textures and you can control it all mathematically, it's procedural and the benefits are you're not taking up space on your hard drive and you have controls if you add controls and you have infinite resolution. So that's just kind of the intro for what it is we're going to be talking about. And that, let me start a new blunder scene. And I guess we shouldn't save this. That's fine. The only other thing I want to talk about is how we even get to the menu I was in before. So I'm going to assume you've never touched Node, so we're really going to start from the super, super basics. So luckily, this is actually very simple because you can just, over here we have our workspaces, you have layout, modeling, etc. All we have to do is click shading, and we're in this pretty much the same menu we were in before. So that's pretty much the tutorial for that. Uh, you can also, by the way, really what we're interested in is this window over here, the 3D viewport we already had. But this window is called the shader editor, or sometimes just the node editor, but we'll call it shader editor. And if you don't want to go to the shading workspace, you can just open up a new window like that. You just drag that up. And then we can select instead of 3D viewport, we select shader editor. And now you have pretty much the same thing, but now it's in the layout workspace and you can also do this sideways. So let's do it like that. Normally, I'm just going to be clicking a shading. So that's how you get to the menu that I'm usually in. Uh, the only other things we need to take care of before we get started talking about nodes and all that is some settings. So go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and I want to make sure that you are using a special add-on called Node Wrangler. So you just type it in, it's going to be there, and for you it's probably disabled if you haven't enabled it before. Make sure you enable this add-on. We are going to be using it literally every tutorial. And what it's going to let us do is a bunch of cool stuff. So for example, Normally, if you have a node, a node, and you know a branch between these, we'll talk about what all that means. Uh, the way you disconnect is you just pull it off, and then you can connect like this. And when you have a lot of nodes, that takes a while. So what Node Wrangler lets you do is something like that, and then you can connect like this. So it's kind of like shortcuts for these kinds of things. And especially if you have two different nodes, do you really want to do it like this? And if you're zoomed out, it's kind of hard to do that, or would you rather just connect really quickly like this and disconnect? This is just a faster way to work. And there are a ton of other commands and things that Node Wrangler lets you do. But um, I'm not sure if this one, what I'm about to do, if uh, collapsing a node and hiding everything except what we're using is a Node Wrangler feature, but it might be. But either way, make sure you have Node Wrangler enabled. And the other thing that you guys might care about is I think there's kind of a divide between people who like uh, curved noodles and people who like straight ones. And I'm just going to show you how to switch between those. So again, edit preferences. This time it is in themes, and then you go to node editor. So this time not shader editor, but node editor, whatever, same thing. And we can control pretty much a lot of these things, like what color it's going to be when it's highlighted, etc. If you see the bottom setting, it says noodle cur curving, and you can change that. So now if it's zero, you have perfectly linear straight lines. And I think a lot of people, I think Simon Toms even likes to work this way. Or you could do, yeah, I'm sorry about all the stuttering today. Or you could do something with a lot of curving, which kind of gets ridiculous. So I like to keep this at around four. And really, now that you know what procedural means, you know how to get to this workspace, or maybe just go to the shading workspace is the faster way to do it. And you also know about the add-on and everything. I think you're ready to probably get started on the second tutorial where we actually talk about stuff that matters. And we're just going to be talking about some super simple stuff like value, color, etc., how to control those, and generally how to work with nodes. So there you go. That is the first part of this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And again, it's just a preview. I know we didn't go over much, but 
Tomorrow, I will come out with the second tutorial, hopefully. I'm not going to rush it. See you guys.